Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning on this webinar on the comparison between Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP, and EGD. Um, as usual, we'll just go straight into the presentation, and if you have any questions, we can get to those at the end. Welcome to today's tutorial. Let's get started. Let's have a look at our agenda for today. Today we're looking at comparing the Ethernet IP, Modbus TCP and Ethernet Global Data protocols. First we'll look at why we are comparing these protocols and the origins of these protocols. And then we'll look at how we are comparing these protocols including the different data models they are based on and what messaging types are used. Then we'll look at the strengths and weaknesses of these protocols and when to use them and when not to use them as well as applications with these protocols with our Horner OCS all-in-one controllers. First, let's look at why we are comparing these industrial Ethernet protocols. A common question we get asked is which protocol should I use in my application? Sometimes there can be some uncertainty as to which protocol is the best in different applications. Ethernet IP and Modbus TCP are two very popular protocols, however there's not a lot of content that compares the two directly. Also, the third protocol we'll talk about, Ethernet Global Data, isn't nearly as popular as the other two, but is a very underrated protocol, and we'll show you why that is. Next, let's talk about the origins of these protocols. We'll start with Modbus TCP. It is thought of as Modbus over Ethernet. The Modbus protocol was developed in the late 70s by Modicon as a serial protocol. And then as time went on and Ethernet became more popular, Modbus was adapted to Ethernet as well. So Modicon, who is now owned by Schneider, were the inventors of the protocol. It's generally thought of as a general purpose protocol and it's not really thought of as a Modicon specific protocol. For Ethernet IP, you can think of that as device net over Ethernet. It started out as a protocol that was used over CAN called device net. It's called common industrial protocol nowadays and it's been adopted to a variety of media. Ethernet being the most popular of those. Even though this is an open protocol that is embraced by multiple manufacturers, it's commonly associated with Rockwell because that's the protocol that they use on their product. Ethernet Global Data was invented as a joint effort between GE Automation and GE Drives in the 1990s. It was used mainly on the GE products, but it has not proliferated widely like the other protocols have. So now let's begin comparing these protocols, beginning with the data model that these protocols use. We'll start with Modbus TCP. Modbus TCP was based on Modbus, which was invented in the late 1970s. At that time, it made sense to model the protocol on a traditional PLC, which were register-based and strictly consisted of integer and Boolean data types. Over time, other data types of course became popular, like floating point, double integer, etc. Even though Modbus TCP wasn't necessarily adapted directly for those other data types, companies like Horner and many others did adapt to Modbus to support additional data types by concatenating word type registers together to create floating point, double integer and other data types. Modbus also includes an addressing scheme that traditionally is a five digit address that consists of four different types of data coils, inputs, input registers, and holding registers. Next, we'll talk about Ethernet Global Data, because like Modbus, Ethernet Global Data was created in the day where a register-based PLC was standard. It was created in the 1990s by GE, so like Modbus, it's based upon Boolean and word type variables, but has been later adapted to include 32-bit data types. However, unlike Modbus, Ethernet Global Data doesn't have the specific predefined Modbus addresses. Ethernet IP was adapted in the early 2000s, and it's an object-based and tag-based model, as opposed to register-based. Next, we'll talk about the types of messaging used in these protocols. Before we do that, let's talk in general about TCP versus UDP messaging. We'll start with TCP, which stands for Transmission Control Protocol. It's a connection-based protocol, which means that two devices have to establish a connection with each other before they can start exchanging data. TCP has error recovery built in, so if you send a TCP message and there's a problem with that message getting through, there is an automatic retry mechanism built into the protocol. 
That's an advantage as you have reliable transfers, but can also be a disadvantage because there's extra bytes that get sent along with the data when you send a TCP message, meaning there's higher bandwidth requirements. So that means as a percentage of the number of bytes sent over the wire, the data is smaller than with UDP. So technically, it's slower because of that. Also note that TCP is a unicast style connection where it's strictly one device talking to one other device. Next, let's talk about UDP or User Datagram Protocol. That's a connectionless protocol, so two devices can start communicating straight away. Error recovery is not built in with UDP. It's the responsibility of the receiver and you have to take care of that outside of the protocol. Because there isn't extra bytes affiliated with retries, it has lower bandwidth requirements. And this technically makes it faster. UDP is multicast, so data can be sent from one device to multiple other devices simultaneously. Now let's look at what messaging is used by the three protocols we are looking at. We'll start with Modbus TCP. This obviously is using TCP and it uses it in a pole response type approach where you have a Modbus TCP client which is sending out queries to a Modbus TCP server who is responding with a reply. Next, let's talk about Ethernet IP and its messaging. Ethernet IP is unique in that it's two protocols in one from a messaging standpoint. It uses TCP for what are called explicit messages. Those are things like setup data or configuration data. Then it uses UDP, which is a producer-consumer model for its I.O. type messaging, which is called implicit messaging. Finally, Ethernet Global Data is strictly a UDP protocol following that producer-consumer model. So for implicit I.O. messaging, as well as regular messaging, you don't have any retries built in. But both of those parts of the protocol support both unicast and multicast, which allows not just one-to-one -one communications, but multicast allows a single device to send data that's received by multiple other devices from that same message. So you don't have to take the same message and repeat it over and over again. You can send that one message in a multicast scheme and multiple devices will receive that one message. This also helps to conserve bandwidth. Now let's talk about strengths and weaknesses of each of these three protocols. There's no perfect protocol and every protocol has advantages and disadvantages. Let's start with Modbus TCP. For its strengths, firstly, Modbus TCP is a simple protocol with wide support and it's straightforward to implement. Another thing to note is that Modbus data is a two-way type data. What does that mean? Well, with Ethernet global data and with the implicit or IO messaging that's built into Ethernet IP, there's data that goes out to the network and there's data that comes from the network. So separate variables are produced and separate variables are consumed. With Modbus TCP, however, the registered data is two ways, so it can be read or written by multiple devices on the network talking to each other, which can be an advantage. A disadvantage of using Modbus TCP is that because Modbus was created before 32-bit data types like floating point were used, you can have word order or byte order compatibility issues. Some manufacturers may not follow the best practices in terms of the order in which data gets sent out and it's possible for words or bytes to become switched. That's not normal, but it happens way more than with other protocols and is something to be aware of. Also, because it's a pole response type protocol, when you have many units talking to each other, performance and your response times that you can achieve are limited. For Ethernet IP, for strengths, its compatibility is good because it's a well-defined protocol and there are well-defined compatibility tests that are typically run on devices that talk on the network. Another strength of Ethernet IP is the fact that if you're using Rockwell PLCs, it's an easy protocol to use. That's because some of the things that can be complicated about Ethernet IP are handled in the Rockwell, are handled in the Rockwell software that you pay for when using those products. On the flip side, for its weaknesses, if you're not typically using Rockwell products and software, it's not as easy to use. The performance of Ethernet IP is okay, and it's not bad, but it's certainly not industry leading. Next, let's talk about Ethernet Global Data. For its strengths, Ethernet Global Data is really good at one thing, and that is that it's very efficient at moving big chunks of PLC variable data. So if you have a few hundred words of variables that you want to move from controller to controller, Ethernet Global Data does that extremely well. 
The main weakness to Ethernet Global Data is it's not supported by many manufacturers. If you're using Horner products, we do support it and it can be a real advantage. But if you're not using Horner products or some GE or Emerson products, for example, then it's not available to you. Now let's talk about when to use and when not to use these different protocols. First of all, when should you use Modbus TCP? If you're looking to have devices from multiple manufacturers communicate with each other, Modbus is a great protocol. It's not perfect, but when it comes to wide adoption, Modbus is one of the best and most used. It's also a good solution when you need a host software package, like a SCADA package, to be able to exchange data with plant devices like PLCs. Modbus is often found in PLCs as well as in host software packages and is often included for free with those host software packages. So that's another advantage. Modbus TCP is good if the device you're talking to is very simple because there's a good chance that device has implemented Modbus as its protocol. So when shouldn't you use Modbus TCP? If a poll response type protocol is too slow for your application's needs, Modbus is not the best choice. For example, if you have seven or eight devices and you have one client that's polling seven servers, your communication times could be at about half a second or longer. So if those type of response times are too slow, then Modbus TCP may not be the protocol for you. Now let's talk about when to use and when not to use Ethernet IP. If you're a Rockwell user and that's your primary PLC and automation product, you're going to be using Ethernet IP because Rockwell essentially mandates it if you're using Ethernet. If a Rockwell PLC isn't your primary controller, but you want to have compatibility with Rockwell PLCs, then adding Ethernet IP to your machine or to your system could be a good choice. So when should you not use Ethernet IP? If you're not primarily using Rockwell and don't need compatibility with Rockwell products, then there's no real reason to use it. Finally, let's talk about Ethernet Global Data. So when should you use Ethernet Global Data? Well, if you're a Horner user, then Ethernet Global Data could have some real advantages. So if a Horner PLC is your primary controller and you need to move chunks of variable data between controllers because you have multiple controllers in the same system, Ethernet Global Data is a great choice. With EGD, you can get 10 to 20 millisecond response times while moving many variables. If you're not a Horner user, or if you're not breaking up your control task into multiple controllers, or if a poll response protocol like Modbus TCP fits all your needs, then you wouldn't need to use Ethernet Global Data. Finally, let's talk about some of the best applications for these different protocols with the Horner OCS. Let's start with Modbus TCP. The Horner OCS can be used either as a Modbus TCP server where it's responding to queries from a client, or it can be the client itself where it's polling multiple server devices, or it can be both at the same time. There are some good applications for all three of these situations. When the OCS is the server, it's a great way to provide access to all the OCS variables that you want to share with a SCADA package or some other host software package because it's probably not going to cost you anything extra on the host software side because it likely has a Modbus driver built in. And all the OCS memory types are all directly mapped over to Modbus data types as well. When using the OCS as a Modbus TCP client with our products, the OCS is polling other devices that are servers. An example here is you have a variety of third-party devices, maybe variable frequency drives for example, and you want to be able to control those drives and get diagnostic information and do fault resetting over a network. Modbus TCP client executed in the OCS is a great way of doing that and is a good way to allow an OCS to exchange data with a device from another manufacturer. Another application where you can use Modbus TCP client and server protocols together is where you have two or three OCS products on a machine or in an application and you want your operator to be able to operate the system from any of those screens, even if only one of them is actually doing the control. This gives you the ability for the operator to be standing in two or three possible locations where they can operate the equipment. We showed how you could create an application like this in last week's webinar. If you have more than two or three different OCSs involved with this specific application, you're better off using Ethernet Global Data. But if you're just using two or three, you can still get excellent response times with Modbus TCP.
Now let's talk about Ethernet IP. So what are some of the best applications for that? Well, if you're an OEM and you, have, and you make a piece of equipment and you want your product to have Rockwell compatibility, even though it's not based on a Rockwell PLC, then you can simply add Ethernet IP IO messaging to the OCS just by checking a checkbox and configuring some additional information. That's very straightforward and then, even though your equipment is not based on Rockwell controls, it can communicate back and forth with Rockwell products very easily. You could also use one of our OCS products that all feature built-in I.O. and use them as a remote I.O. device on Ethernet IP. So if you just can't get Ethernet IP I.O., you can use one of our own OCS I.O. products for that purpose. Another application example is where you want one of our OCS controllers to act like an intelligent operator interface communicating with a control logic CPU and you can do that using something called Logix Tag Exchange. That allows an OCS to again act as an intelligent user interface because it's not just displaying data on the screen, it also has logic capability and built-in I.O. capability and some additional functionality as well. Now, with Ethernet Global Data, what are some of the use cases? Well, if you're using a Horner OCS in your application and you're distributing your control tasks, or in other words, you're breaking the control tasks down into pieces and having different pieces of the task being executed by different controllers, Ethernet Global Data is a great protocol to use because you can move hundreds of these variables that are shared from system to system very quickly and efficiently and maintain excellent response times with the data updates on the network. If you have applications where you want to use multiple OCS screens in an application and you have more than two or three of those screens, Ethernet Global Data is the best solution for that. A final point to make is that you shouldn't be afraid to use multiple protocols simultaneously. There's no reason why you have to stick to one particular protocol one of the benefits of Ethernet is the fact that you can have multiple simultaneous protocols working together generally. With Horner products, we support a minimum of 16 simultaneous Ethernet connections, and it's usually more than that. That concludes our demonstration for today. Thank you for joining me for today's tutorial, and the Q&A session will begin shortly. Okay. Um, let me just go back to my screen there for the moment. Um, so hopefully you should all see that now. So next week we have PID tuning. Um, so the registration link as always is up same time every week. And if you do want to go back and rewatch that video or any past videos, you can scroll down and they'll always, they'll always be up there. Um, I'm not seeing anything in other than that. Um, uh, Thank you all for joining us this morning, and we do hope to see you again.